You've probably heard of the idea of the asylum seeker arriving by boat as a queue jumper. Where does this idea of the queue jumper come from? Well, there is no queue to claim protection. It's not like going to the deli at Coles and taking a ticket and waiting for your turn to be protected as a refugee. So let's unpack this a little bit more to see why we have this sense of a queue jumper in Australian discourse. At the moment, Australia sets aside 13,750 places for refugees each year. Most other countries don't have a quota system like this, so it's something that we have done as a matter of policy, certainly not as a matter of legal obligation. In the last few years, Australia has set aside 6,000 resettlement places for refugees in camps or urban areas in other countries. The United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, UNHCR, has a look at who has the most acute need for resettlement. And then they decide on a list of people who are resettlement priorities. And that list is then looked at by the Australian government and other countries that resettle refugees from camps and other areas abroad. In many parts of the world, there aren't refugee camps for people to reach. And so often people are living in slum areas or in urban areas without rights to work, at risk of being detained, and so on. The other point to note is that UNHCR's resettlement priorities don't operate according to when you actually turned up and registered with UNHCR. It operates more like a hospital triage system. So if you're sitting in emergency with a broken arm, and somebody comes in in respiratory failure, then of course the doctors are going to help that person before they attend to your broken arm, even though you were there first. And it's the same with refugee resettlement. There isn't a queue. It's not like lining up at the deli. It depends on how dire your circumstances are as to whether or not you're prioritised for resettlement. In addition to the 6,000 places set aside for refugee resettlement from overseas, Australia has historically had 7,750 places in its special humanitarian program. Now what's this? This is a program that is designed to bring other vulnerable people across from overseas. For instance, women at risk women perhaps who are on their own and at risk of sexual violence in their home country. It's also been used as a way for refugees already in Australia to bring across family members left behind. It's out of this number, the 7,750, that asylum seekers arriving in Australia, whether by plane or boat, have their visa component taken. So when we sometimes hear that asylum seekers who arrive here by boat are taking the places of refugees from camps and other settlements overseas, that's inaccurate. Those 6,000 refugee places are quarantined for resettlement and the onshore arrival component comes out of this other humanitarian program. Many people say that asylum seekers are coming here for economic opportunities. In other words, they are economic refugees. However, the statistics don't bear this out. Between 2011 and 2012, the Immigration Department's statistics show that 93% of asylum seekers who came to Australia by boat were in fact genuine convention refugees whom Australia has an obligation to protect. As you'd know, Australia receives refugees who come here by plane or by boat. Why do people arrive in such a way to Australia? Let's take the boat example. People come by boat because very often there are no camps for them to get to and they can't necessarily register with the UN agency. Furthermore, it's a bit like being in a burning building. Imagine you're waiting for the fire brigade to come and the flames are encroaching on you. You think, if I wait here, the fire brigade might come and I might be saved. If I jump, I might die, 
but I also might live. And as those flames come closer to you, you think the only opportunity I've got to survive is to jump. And asylum seekers sometimes describe the reason why they get on a boat as being similar to this. Even though they know the voyage is dangerous, they also know that it might offer the only opportunity for protection. If they're sent home, then they will be at risk of persecution, maybe even death or torture. If they get on a boat, they might lose their life at sea, but they might also have a chance of being protected. And so that's why people take very risky boat journeys, not because they want to, not because they're seeking an economic future or anything like that. It's because they are fleeing for their lives. Currently, it's estimated that there are around 15.4 million refugees in the world. Every year, UNHCR identifies about 800,000 refugees who really need to be resettled in other countries because of their need for protection. However, there are currently only 80,000 places all over the world where countries agree to take refugees. So you can see what the disparity is between the number of refugees needing resettlement and the number of places available. The Refugee Council of Australia has calculated that it would take around 117 years if you were to sit and wait to be resettled, if all refugees in the world could, in fact, be resettled.